All right. Hello. Welcome to the Transportation Task Group meeting, Monday, September 19th. Um, this could potentially be a truncated meeting. Um, I think on our standing agendas, we usually like to cover updates on advanced clean cars too, advanced clean trucks, the rulemaking, and more so likely the public events that have been happening. If there's updates and things to say there, um, maybe helpful to have a conversation. We put forward our working draft of a memo that cross-sector mitigation had advanced for council consideration to think about what next in terms of filling the gap in the climate action plan. Um, it was good initial conversation. We can debrief that a little bit. Um, and then just standing, Andrea, if there's any updates from VTrans or other partners on the carbon reduction strategy, just, just a standing agenda item if we wanna cover any of that. But one thing I would like to cover with you all is what's the right cadence of meetings? We were meeting weekly and pretty intensely and um, <clears throat> wanna just make sure that we're, you know, there's, we're doing the work that needs to be done, but also being cognizant of busy people's schedules. And so that was my thought on what we'd like to cover. Do others want to add anything to the agenda? Jane? The the random hand with no face? I'm coming. Okay. Sorry. I was chewing. Um I just I think you kind of hit this, but just I think you as a task group should decide what or how the structure of the memo will be prepared what feels like probably at the November council meeting um, for adoption. And if that's a, a separate mem, mem I, I'm struggling to see the way as it's written right now that it's an addendum to the climate action plan. I feel like it has to be sort of strength, like strengthened the way it's written for it to be like an official addendum or I could be wrong though. So um, you all should grapple with, is it, is it, the way it is and it'll be adopted as is with minor edits or is there like a restructuring of how it's written to, for like an official addendum to be adopted on for the climate plan. Um, okay. You have to decide that today, but that's just something I'm wondering. Maybe we're not there now, Jane, but just to preview a question that I have about that is that at some point I'd be interested to hear what you think is either um, missing from it that should be added for purposes of an addendum or if there's anything in there that you feel like is would not be necessary for purposes of, of an addendum or is it really just like a style and format question? I think first and foremost for me is the style and format question. Like, I mean, the way that, you know, it's like we, that we've organized around pathway strategies action. Like I just need to like, think about how like you tie it back to the climate. I don't think it has to be written as pathway strategies, actions, but these are actions I would imagine. And just like we're tying it back neatly to the actual plan. So that, it's not about what's missing. It's, for me, it's more just the style, but I could be voted down on that if others think it's fine the way it is, or if it's more like an addendum as a memo or like form, I just want to discuss it as what's most appropriate. This is like new charted territory, and it would actually be helpful for me to see understand how you all think about it as counselors too, um, because since we're drafting now the biomass ones and are starting in a different place with that, it would be nice to bring some consistency to both of them. Okay. Bram. That was fun, actually raising real hand. Um, <laughs> uh, so, you know, we were on the verge of including a recommendation that Vermont join GCIP as part of the climate plan. And I wonder, um, uh, you know, I, I wonder what our thinking is in terms of realistically when we will be able to make a recommendation um, as to what should take its place in the meantime, because right now the memo doesn't make a recommendation, right? It says here, the, here are some options and here's what we got to do. But, um, you know, to say we as 
a transportation group and we as a cross-sector mitigation subcommittee recommend to the council that we as a council recommend whatever it is western climate initiative or you know whatever performance standard whatever it is that we do um you know right now it's right now included in the plan it doesn't add much to the plan in terms of here's what we got to do right Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have a thought on that, but one thing I just would note is this feels like a substantive conversation. I know Gina wanted to be here for it. Do we want to wait and then give an update? Like, or do we want to just dig into it? Because <clears throat> I don't know if there's anything we wanted to give an update on advanced clean cars and advanced clean trucks before Megan leaves and while we wait for potentially Gina to join. Because you raise a big, important question. That's the substance. And I think we should wrangle with it. Um, but was, in terms of this agenda, what we want to cover now, do we want to tackle what Bram is putting out there? Or do we want to pivot? Mm, it's tough because we only have Megan for a limited period of time, right? Yeah. One, I don't one, even know if there's much to say about advanced clean cars too and advanced clean trucks hearings because we've all been in it, like way in it. So if it was just like a recap for anyone who wanted to like watch the recording of this conversation, we could do that, but that doesn't seem like a very good use of time. So I, I just have one item in relation to the rule and oh, Gina's here. And Perfect. also in relation to how frequently we meet. Um, and I, I could throw that out now, but I think I'll wait my turn. Um. I mean, whatever works for you. I just was trying to buy some time for Gina to participate in the conversation. And well, then... while she's connecting to audio, I'll just mention that. Um, so after the public hearings are done, our public comment period closes September 30th for the rules. Um, the, the public events, I think, are going really well, by the way. Um, we had our Bell's Falls meeting on, on Thursday that Andrea um, facilitated very well. And um, we had a better than expected turnout some good discussion. Um, so that was great. And um, I'll just mention that after September 30th, we're going to be working really hard to um, develop a responsiveness summary to comments, which is going to be kind of our next heavy lift. Um, and then, oh, and we got an intern to help. Thanks, Jane. Yay. <laughs> um, and then we have um, a filing with LCAR and we'll be before LCAR. And so I guess I just wanted to say that I would appreciate at least check-ins with this group every other week to stay in touch about how that process is going and to receive input from this task group because I think that this is still a group effort <laughs> given that these recommendations came from the transportation task group into the climate action plan. Um, and that I think we're really gonna need the broader support um, in terms of you know, talking about um, making sure that we're messaging the rule accurately and appropriately. Um, there's a lot of misunderstanding about what is being required um, with the public and um, with Alcar even as well. You know, so we're, we're working on many fronts to really make sure that people have the right information. And so to continue talking with this group about how we can um, message and educate and then also, um, you know, how we communicate that in, in the rest of our process. Um, and hopefully we will, you know, get across the finish line before December 1st, which is the deadline in the GWSA. Um, and ideally before December 31st, which is our, the, the timeline that we have to actually put the rule into place for model year 26. So um, I just wanted to put that in that pitch that I feel like we still need your help. <laughs> Well, that's great. That's important update and work. And maybe we'll circle back to the every other week and when that actually begins. I think that we're getting some strong enthusiasm for that um, pace, which I would agree. Um, so maybe let's hold that until we like wrap the conversation. But I that input's really helpful, Megan. And I think it's a good um, suggested approach. But now, Gina, are you with us? I'm going to assume she is. Um, and let's go back to the question you posed again, Bram. 
in terms of <clears throat> just substantively, you know, first of all, I would say just as a reminder, friendly amendment to your, we did, the Climate Council did recommend to actually join TCIP. Yep. So that's still in the Climate Action Plan. And it could still have legs if it gained some political momentum. The reality is that was over a decade's worth of work um, that had a robust analysis behind it. And we lack something akin to that for a performance-based measure, a clean transportation standard, or you know, a different type of cap and invest program. So to your question, Bram, about what the timing of that would be and what we would recommend. That is why the memo is so vague because we don't have that level of detail. What we understand is that it doesn't add up to the Global Warming Solutions Act legal requirement to make progress in the sector. So we're trying to figure out grappling with that. What do we recommend? And so we recommended those small steps and then that we recommended that we don't do more to figure out what is the answer to that question. Maybe magically TCIP gets resurrected. Um, but that's this is the moment we're in. So what do people think about um, best next steps to try to answer Bram's question and what we're trying to grapple with here? Do we consider the memo complete based on the climate council meeting do you hear me you cut out a little bit but yeah i think we did um no i think we should talk about the climate council meeting and i guess one of the things um jane i don't know if you had tallied up like you know david the facilitator had gone through a, a one a two and a three one being like this seems right to me two being like right right directionally but with maybe adjustments and three being like non-starter and then leslie ann bless her heart was like number four i think i need to read it um uh so i don't i never saw a tally of where people landed generally it seemed like there was a lot of ones there was a two from michelle um and i don't know if there was any other input but it seemed like generally directionally people seemed supportive but it that is not surprising to me because it's directionally aligned with what we know we need to do. Yeah, so I will I, say that. I'm oh, sorry. I'll look right now. Sorry, I'll be quick, Jared. Um, I'll look right now. I have the minutes from the meeting that I have in my email that I haven't looked at, which will include that. So I'll drop it in the chat in a second. And I will just say that I know Julie wasn't at the meeting, and I know she, we, I drew her attention to it at our check in on Friday. Um, and she has not reviewed it yet. So just as a flag. Yeah. And I, you know, I think we'd need to hear from like Michelle. And I do wonder, like, do we invite Michelle? She had raised, you know, wanting some feedback. It would just be helpful to know if you had a better sense of that input, Jane, to know what that is. Go ahead, Jared. Yeah, I, I just, it was kind of fresh in my mind. I kind of did a quick tally based on what people actually put in the chat. There were eight counselors who, who said one is good to go as is. The twos were Michelle and uh, Secretary Clauser, and then Leslie Ann said that she hadn't read it. So I do think that it would be good ahead of finalizing it if there are things um, that are on Michelle's mind that have not already been shared or on Secretary Clauser's mind that have not been shared to ask them to share those uh, in advance of a next task group meeting and ideally join if if they want to. But hopefully, given that you know there were the, the, the vast majority was very comfortable with it, were were close, and that those aren't you know major changes or or if they're fundamental disagreements, then you know sometimes we just have to agree to disagree and move move forward. But um, yeah, so I think we should invite them to comment on what those twos were and see if we can incorporate changes um, or what we want to do to finalize this ahead of the next council meeting. In terms of how it shows up, um, 
I do think that it's not too far away. There may be some style or formatting things, as Jane said, that makes sense, but content substance wise, I think it's close. I do think one thing we would want to do is um, actually, you know, in the place in the cap where it points to have recommend new recommendations by November, change that to say these recommendations were delivered and they are in addendum or you know whatever part of the appendix so that in the actual document it references it and we're posting an updated file of the cap so it's what's up there isn't just the old dated one where people don't know what that recommendation is so i think it's not just enough to add it we need to link to it reference to it in the in the main text of the original cap as well if that makes sense mm -hmm. Jane's looking very studious, so I'm wondering if you're tallying or if there's any other further context, like in the comments. I was trying to read the comments during the conversation, but um, I agree that it would be helpful to hear from folks who, you know, said to what their concerns might be and how we can address them. And does it make sense to invite them to a task group meeting or just to ask them to put those concerns in writing? And we can share, is there if like there's a Word document um, that they can offer red line comments on? And how does that, wanna, does that comport with open wanna, law? Mm -hmm. okay. No, go ahead. Okay. okay, I didn't wanna speak for Andrea, but um, I do think that our two secretaries will likely coordinate on a response and an approach to these recommendations. And so, um, it might make sense for Andrea and I to do some homework um, with um, them and sort of see what the best next steps from their vantage point is and bring that forward um, with you all. And I, Andrea, you and I can commit to doing that over the next week just to think about a process for understanding concerns or next steps with them um, and then bring that forward. Because as far as administration officials, I would argue probably Julie and Secretary Flynn are the critical ones and will likely probably pull the sway of other administration officials if, if there's sway to be had. Um, yeah, I feel like it's just hard yeah, to- We can out for the week, but after one, two turns. <laughs> Sorry, there's a delay. Somewhere, I don't know if it's my end or another computer. I was just gonna say, I feel like it's hard to know the way forward unless we know the nature and substance of what those are. So as soon as Jane and Andrea can coordinate to, to share those with us, I think that's that's great. So Joe, you said 10 years into TCIP. Um, we clearly don't wanna spend 10 years figuring out the next option. No. And feels like we probably don't need to. Um, you know, I think some of the options, there's probably plenty of data on, um, but, uh, you know, as Jared has pointed out, um, time is short and, uh, you know, is it at all reasonable to think that we will be able to recommend um, a transportation sector program to the legislature this coming session? I have, if it's okay, I just have two thoughts on this and they may not be mutually exclusive. They're kind of questions. One is I, I have thought that it would be entirely appropriate to share the recommendation as it is with the legislature to say, there's a gap. We're aware of two broad types of policy action that cr can create certainty within the parameters we all want, guaranteed emissions reduction, cost effectiveness, market-based program has the ability to center and advance equity. Um, and to me, I almost feel like it would be appropriate to invite them to have hearings on um, the pros and cons and the key considerations of those different policy options so that they are invested in and involved in what, what recommendation 
emerges. Now, because I think that, you know, theoretically, we can have preferences between, you know, a, a cap based program or a performance standard based program. To me, they're really doing the same thing. It's just kind of an inverse program design. You know, one is pollution allowances that you pay for. The other is credits for reducing emissions that have a value. Um, but I, I feel like we could, we could achieve the emissions reductions and meet the other goals of the law in terms of cost effectiveness, equity, energy cost reductions through either of those approaches. So the question to me of a preference between them feels more of a, it, it, it's, I mean, we could ask this task group, the cross-sector committee, the council to choose between them and make a recommendation. But my feeling is, is the truth is you could, you could do, do it via either or both in a complementary way. And so I wonder about, I, I feel like may, maybe it's not as, it's certainly not as clear of a recommendation as pass a clean heat standard, but I think it's the truth that you could design either a cap or a performance standard to achieve a much higher degree of, of confidence and advance all of the requirements and goals that, that we have. And so I, I wonder if we just say, you know, have, have committees dig into that and hold hearings on your preferred approach of one and or the other. Um, yeah, I feel like a, this is a, like a naive question. For the cap and invest, don't, what, what would they be like, what would they be looking at? Like set standing one up for Vermont or joining WCI at this point? I think the two options, and I would defer to Megan on this, but I think the two options would be setting a Vermont specific cap, either in the way that Oregon has done or in the way that Nova Scotia has done. And those are variations. Oregon has their own program, whereas Nova Scotia right. is using some yeah. of the tools and resources of WCI, but they're not in the California and Quebec market. So I think if Vermont were to go to advance cap-based program, it would probably either, it, until and unless other states or, you know, something re-emerges with TCI, it would be one of those three options. It would be join WCI, do something like Nova Scotia did, or do something like Oregon did. So those are like, feel like the three sub-options under cap to, it, to be explored. I, I'm curious what Megan thinks about that, though. No, I, I think that's right on, Jared. Um, just want to remind folks that the key difference with Oregon's program is that there's no um, sale of allowances. It's a free allocation, which obviously has different implications for effectiveness. Yep. And hi, is, hi, sorry, it's Gina. It's it's Gina and. I'm happy to report the cell service between St. Jay and Hardwick is not functioning today, in case anyone's wondering. Um, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry I'm late because I feel like I really need to catch up with a lot of stuff, but um, I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to maintain the service that I have right now. That's Maybe okay. you didn't even hear me. We, did <laughs> I don't hear know. we can hear you, yeah. we're glad we can to have hear you. you. Okay, we can, we can. And, and yeah. Anyway, go on. Um, so, I mean, one thing that may be helpful, whether it's in service of what you're suggesting in terms of legislative hearings or in general um, for ourselves and for others is to sort of sketch out, the, as you noted, Jared, like the key characteristics of different approaches, pros and cons and, you know, and things that we need to be thinking of in terms of like administrative, like, like capacity and stuff like that, because it's not like the choices that are going to drive our ability to reduce emissions are radically different under either a performance-based standard or a cap and invest program. So we're going to electrify a lot, single occupancy vehicles, transit, public transit, walk, bike, you know, all kinds of those different strategies are gonna be ideally enabled under either any kind of approach. So I think it would be helpful. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think the difference is less in the technologies and it's more the obligated parties, it's the administration of it and it's to, yeah. you know, 
the the role of um, investment or not, and who's making that? Private yep. entities or the public sector? Yep, exactly. Um, can I can I just say one thing? Um, and I heard parts of this conversation in and out. Um, I the part of the council meeting that I listened to. I just felt like the administration is keeping their cards very, very close to their chest on this. And that I, I don't, I'm not as starry eyed as some of you are, that the memo is going to, to um, go forth in the way we want it to. I, I have to be convinced of that. I'm, I'm worried that, um, that, that someone's gonna come down you know, we may have a majority on the council like we did before, um, but politically, I don't know how far we're going to be able to advance in the legislature on some of the things you're talking about right now without the work that VTrans is, is going to do in the next year. Maybe I'm too pessimistic and too cynical, but I, 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 I'm sorry to bring this up now, but I, it's just what I've been thinking um, generally about where we are right now with the council and what we can do um, to move things forward. Logically, it we're right on track, but politically, I don't, I don't, I don't know that we are. Maybe we don't worry about that. Anyway, that's yeah, my no, two cents. That's a those are good points, Gene, and I think um, you know related to that is you know whether or not. Um, whether or not we want to recommend a specific policy or as Jared said, sort of leave the options open um, for the legislature and for the governor to uh, kind of sort through and collect information and, and choose a direction on their own and then sort it out between them. Um, and I, you know, I don't really have a feel for what the legislature's preference would be. Um, you know, my my sense is that their task to us was, you know, make a recommendation, mm -hmm. and um, you know, my preference would be to do that. Would be to, you know, sort through the three cap, trade, reduce, invest options, and um, you know, I don't know if the options on the performance standard side are as clear or as well defined, but to figure out what the options are. And, you know, it's, I think, uh, good practice to say, here are the options we looked at, and here's why we are recommending this one. And let them take it from there. And, and, equal, and equally show that all the large federal largesse and all these actions that we're taking now won't add up, which, which Jared brilliantly has explained and Joey explained at the council, but I think we need to keep saying that in as clear a way as is possible. That because right now people can hide behind the fact that so much is going on um, federally. I mean, thank God for the infrastructure bill. Thank God for the, the climate change bill. But we need to be able to articulate that. We all understand it and know it, but I don't know if everyone on the council understands that, let alone the, you know, the legislature. So we need to keep beating that drum. I mean, maybe one option is, is we do, um, we, we do both. I, I feel like yeah. right now yes. what, we can yes. Say yes. To the, what we can say to the legislature is to have confidence that we meet the legal requirements and that we do so in a way that's cost effective and can advance equity. You have to do at least one of these two options. Uh, could do both. You could do one or the other, but you have to do at least one. And so, and, and, invite them to be part of that policy conversation. At the same time, we could do exactly what Bram recommended, which is we could begin the process of examining the pros, cons, and key considerations of the three at least. Maybe there's an, a, another variation of the cap options of the performance standard options. I mean, that's what that memo way back in the winter and spring was intended to, to do. I think it could be updated slightly. I think we are aware 
We have more information about what Oregon's doing for their cap and reduce program. We have more information and can get more information about Nova Scotia's approach. So, you know, that could be updated, um, but I feel like the risk is, the risk in terms of missing the requirements and in terms of making complying with them much more costly <laughs> is more and more delay and just pointing to studies and okay, well, we'll wait another year or two and see what this study says. That to me is, is not an, an answer because we have a lot of the information we already know. Can we learn more information through studies analysis? Yes, and all of these policies should be under continuous review and analysis, but that doesn't mean you don't act in the meantime with the best information available, especially because a lot of the questions that get brought up are fundamentally unknowable until you create the policy. And then you cr create features like the clean heat standard had around uh, cost containment provisions and look backs and things to, to improve uh, as you learn more information. But um, so I would be in favor of saying that very, which the memo already does, say that clearly to the legislature, to have confidence, to do all of this. We need at least one of these. Um, we are not yet prepared to choose between them, but we're beginning that work. And um, I, I think that would be an appropriate series of, of conversations for this task group, the cross-sector committee. But I think it's good public dialogue for the, for the um, legislature and the public and the council to have um, about these policy options. Um, I agree, Jared. Um, how do we do that? You know, in terms of the information we need and who says what and how does that happen? I mean, my first thought, my first thought, if I was, you know, putting, well, either for the council or for the legislature, I think that what we would want to do is have some webinars and sessions where we can get presentations from Oregon, from Nova Scotia. We can ask them questions. We can get more of the details that are, that are, that would be needed for us to ask, how do we adapt this for and what are the questions to ask to do it in a way that works best for Vermont? But we have to. But I think we have to do more of those steps of of learning from the places that are ahead of us in design and implementation first. And that could be a legislative role, or it could be a council role, or it could be both. You know, my very limited understanding, and maybe this is what Nova Scotia is doing uh, of WCI, is that we can join the transportation portion without joining the other portions. Is that accurate? Yeah. yeah. So it could or be- Or some other combination. You could, yeah. you could do transportation and, and industry. Um, yeah, sort of. Um, I mean, that I think that's helpful because you know we specifically have a transportation deficit and perhaps we fill it with that neatly um so i you know i think it's right i mean what i'm what i'm hearing people saying is there's no way we can um know enough in the next three months to be confident that we know which of these options is going to best meet all of our needs and that you know sounds to me jared your suggestion is that um we in the legislature both investigated in parallel and at some point we'll know enough to feel confident about making a recommendation and the legislature will factor that in wherever they are. Is that a fair summary? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an open question to me, like what we ask from, from the legislature, but generally it seems like a good two, two part, um, approach you laid out jared um one question i have not to like sort of jane you had mentioned early in the conversation november for the climate council meeting can you sketch out like what you were thinking 
because we lopped over October. What's the October climate council meeting going to be about and what, so we can sort of figure out like our timing, you know, A, to get input from Secretary Moore and Secretary Flynn, which I think would be helpful. B, to maybe hammer out like a more more refined two-part approach as we've just been discussing here that could have other pieces to it. And then, so just to think about what we need to do and what, what the council is work is going to be based on what you know is happening that'd be helpful yeah so the two main things for the october meeting will be finalizing the budget um a memo from the council to the governor and legislature and then um the start of the biomass conversation i don't think there'll be room for transportation to come back then and didn't think it really needed to, but you guys can question me on that. It felt like that was the sort of presentation and the work would now happen to sort of ensure that there's consensus or votes for November and then we would refocus again on November and sort of moving to adopt whatever this is and then wouldn't do biomass again. We'd sort of taken every other month approach and do biomass in December. Okay. So in terms of next steps, again, maybe do you think, Jane and Andrea, you can have a conversation with Secretary Moore, Secretary Flynn, and Michelle, whomever that is, Andrea, and then ideally get their thoughts before our next transportation task group meeting, which based on a straw poll survey that we haven't actually finalized in this meeting would be now every other week, putting us at October 3rd. Um, do you think that we might be able to get thoughts from them on the memo and more concrete input from them by that point? Yeah, I think I might like concrete input like on process of engagement and um, how to move forward, but I can strive to get comments. What do you mean process? What process of engagement? I thought you all were asking how like you want to meet and engage with folks like them on understanding what their concerns might be or where they're at on supporting this. I can try. I, I, there's a lot going on. So I, I'll just, and I know Julie's traveling for a week and there's just so much going on. So specific feedback and having committing to her like review, I can't do definitely, but I can definitely commit to um, starting the conversation with her. Okay. I mean, we had talked about maybe bringing them into a meeting, but I feel like they're real busy people. So I think what we had suggested, of course, we'd want to meet them and have an in-depth meet with them and have a more in-depth conversation. But if you were able to, as more direct liaisons, get their thoughts and feedback as soon as possible, that would be great. I know that like recognize they're like crazy busy, but it would help us, I mean, again, as Jared noted, we got pretty clear, decisive direction or support for the direction we're heading, but obviously those are important voices. So understanding that as soon as possible, would be great. And then what I, what I wonder about is if we want to maybe potentially put a little bit more context around that, like to potential two-pronged approach, most substantively like the sort of setting the table for an examination of the pro cons and key considerations of different options and what, how do we continue to edify ourselves and others through webinars, um, et cetera. Go ahead. Maybe one specific deliverable from that, which I would be happy to volunteer for, is to update that memo from the winter and spring to include more specific discussion of the Oregon and Nova Scotia approaches. Um, because I do think that, you know, that ends up being a really important grounding and reference point for this discussion. Because I, I also feel that like there are, there are, you can make a really cost-effective, a really equitable, uh, a really well-designed cap and invest policy. You can make 
really good on all those scores, performance standard policy. To me, there are very few things that are immutable or that are um, so fundamental about either of those policies to argue for one versus the other. Like if the option is a really good performance standard versus a bad cap, I would prefer a performance standard. If the option's a really good cap policy versus a bad. And so to, to me, it's not just like, do you do X or Y? It's what are the design details of X and Y that make, and so, so you can get to the, the, to all of the criteria that we care about through either of those big picture policy approaches. So to me, there, we are gonna run into this somewhat of a challenge of, there's only so much you can say about a broad policy option without really specific design decisions. And so maybe at some point what's needed is a model policy where some of those more specific design decisions are, are made. So you can say that it's not just a cap policy or performance dinner policy, but one would, that would work in these ways to meet the emissions reductions requirements, to do it cost effectively and to advance equity in the other criteria that we have. Yeah, I think one important criterion is, um, you know, the more we can do something that already works someplace else, the less risk there is for us, right? And, um, if, you know, Oregon's program's up and running and so is Nova Scotia's and so is WCI and presumably there are performance standards someplace that we can look at and see how they worked or didn't work. But, uh, yeah, to, to, to the extent- Oregon, that, California, you know, Washington, yeah, I mean, to the extent we can avoid reinventing the wheel and trying to write something from the ground up when there's already stuff out there that we can adopt that has been proven to work, the more confident we are to work, the less risk there is that we do something that won't work. Hmm. Okay. What else? Jared, I'd like to take you up on your offer to update the memo with more recent information. So I hereby deputize you to do that. That will be helpful. Um, Who wants to work with me on that? I would welcome it. I will certain when the timing is right. I don't think it's right now because of all of the rulemaking that's going on, but I'm certainly gonna to wanna to coordinate with, with Megan uh, in terms of some of the research that she's done and kind of communications she's had with other states and provinces to learn about. And as you're we doing that- with Nova Scotia, just so you know, like that feels yeah. like a big wild card to me. We've tried to, and we haven't had any luck yet. Oh, okay. Um, as you're doing that, just one, thought Jared either from you or Megan is like I guess flagging who maybe you know maybe resources and potentially willing it sounds like maybe not Nova Scotia um, yet if we did want to ask people to come in and join us virtually mm -hmm. via webinar to d discuss their program and experience and answer questions about how to potentially adapt it for Vermont um, so Jane you've had no luck reaching out to Nova Scotia on that yet it might have fallen off of Megan's radar, but that's been, you know, we, Megan, Colin, Brian, a number of us met with Oregon a handful of times um, on the state side to have questions and dialogue with them. And it was in our interest to do the same thing with Nova Scotia to start to understand. Um, and Megan, I thought, and maybe, Colin, maybe I'm wrong, was going to help, was going to schedule that. And we po I poked her a few times, but that was, the, I just think she, there's not going to be much capacity from us to plan or support this until after December 1st with LCAR um, and the work there. So, um, and the responsiveness summary. Um, and so we we should just make sure you know what Megan has or hasn't done with Nova Scotia. And, and yeah. um, that is of interest to the state very much to meet with them. Yeah, that's great. That's helpful. Uh, Hi, it's Gina again. The New England governors, the Eastern Canadian premiers, we had a an air quality climate change committee through, you know, seven or eight years ago. And um, V Transit, anyway, at that point had 
contacts in all the provinces. Um, and I don't know to what extent DEC was involved, but um, is the NEGC ECP air quality climate change group still functioning and, and can you get resources I thought New Brunswick too was doing some cutting edge work, but of course this was seven, seven years ago. Um, maybe is Andrea on the phone? I don't know if that work continues. Um, I'm sure it's there yeah, somewhere. I am. I, the I know Dan. Is, did, are you guys did, dialed Dan, into it? Um, it, I'm, I don't know if it still even exists. I know Dan was um, working on it, but I don't know when. Ugh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear you, Andrea? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a pretty bad day with internet. Um, yeah, like I said, Dan Dan had mentioned that to me in the past, but I don't know what his work was on that. I can fish around. Um, I have not heard anything from anyone or any hint that anything is happening with that group in my time. I, you know, we have representatives in A&R who sit on many of those committees from the governor's premier, um, and we have a, like a very active resilience and adaptation one that we get updates on all the time, but never heard anything about that one in my tenure either. I'll just say that I do have um, kind of a, a contact with, with a guy named Mark up there um, from NEGECP who does their kind of inventory work and compiling it for all the provinces and the states, but it's, I mainly just talked to him about data and, and sent him kind of specific things that he needs. So I don't kind of have a, a contact in the broader sense, I guess. But. Okay, well, we certainly don't wanna, we wanna understand what's already happening, piggyback up those not duplicate efforts. Jared, following up with Megan, or would be great. Jane, go forth. Oh my gosh, Gina. <laughs> Poor girl. Um, so two, two things. Um, I do think that like some of the stuff Jared was talking about earlier about like, like starting to allude to like the legislative process and hearings, that gets at like, I think what Andrea and I have talked a little bit about for like having some like tangible next step steps that actually speak to like decision making around policy. And I think that would actually go to strengthen the memo. It doesn't speak to um, sort of the determination of what the policy is, but it sure can show a stepwise approach about how you get there outside of sort of the carbon reduction strategy. So what are the sort of like tasks that this task group or the council could help leverage in the coming months? And then two, I, I value this conversation um, around sort of like what the best policy is and how to determine it. But just want to say that there is also the carbon reduction strategy. And I think that in a way, the memo had been written in a way that strongly stated the need for a sector-wide policy while also sort of like not predetermining that outcome before the carbon reduction strategy. And it's like a sort of iterative understanding over the next year. So you're making progress on what the best policy is, but also sort of waiting on the study a little bit and it's all like coming together at the right time. I would just say that if that doesn't speak to the carbon reduction strategy and the work that AOT is, I suspect they'll be concerned. I'm, I'm hopeful that there will be information in the carbon reduction strategy that comes back and is, is helpful to inform a decision-making process. But if <laughs> prior experience is, is a guide, I, and if my <laughs> professional expertise is, is correct and relevant here, what I think we're very likely to run the risk of is contractors saying there is not enough detail for in order to actually assess some of these policy options, there are really significant design decisions that need to be made first before you can assess them. Um, and I don't think it's, I mean, there's some things that you can say about a broad policy just category. But in order to do the type of advanced analysis 
that will give people the answers to questions that they really want to know, there have to be a, a it, it can't just be assess cap and invest or assess performance standards. It would have to be making these assumptions about the design parameters of that policy. And so I think what's what we're either going to have to do is we're going to have to present some of those kind of placeholder options that allow that analysis to take place, or the contractors are going to come back and say, we don't have enough information to assess this except to talk about it at a very broad level and say the same thing. We're in this Groundhog Day loop of like the same thing happening over and over again, because there's a certain number of things that you can't know until you actually do the policy. And then you build in safeguards and other things to, to improve it as it goes. But I don't think we're going to learn a lot new that we haven't already heard about carbon pricing options versus cap options versus performance standards. So like, yeah, that's great. Let's do the carbon reduction strategy. Hopefully we learned something new, but we, that should not be an excuse for further delaying action when the, when the legislature could hold hearings to put more meat on the bones of the policy options that eventually are gonna need to be chosen between. I, I just for the record, I was agreeing with your next steps, but I also think to Andrea presented on the carbon reduction strategy, it is an integral next step and for many will help bring consensus to like the data that will inform the policy and all of that. And I just think keeping it in there as an integral component of an iterative loop here in learning is critical to sort of bring folks along. Yeah, no, I appreciate it worth mentioning. Yeah, indeed. I never, I mean, I asked this before, but I'm curious because it, VTrans took a different approach in the carbon reduction strategy and has put forward in recommending this this analysis. And I'm, I mean, I guess I can intuit why, but is, I don't know if there's more, is it to inform this conversation? Like, I'm, why? I mean, I, anyway. I, I've got to assume they're doing it because the Fed, thank God for the feds, the feds are saying, you want the money, you got to do this study. No, and but the feds are not requiring the study of policy and regulatory options. Right. No, no, that's where I, you know, I don't know if who's still on the call, if Andrew's still on the call, I'd like to hear her chime in. But I think Michelle and Andrea have the wisdom to know that this is what the Climate Council is doing they have the resources to do the study. I mean, this is the direction the Climate Council needs to be heading. They have the resources to do the study, so they're doing it. And thank yeah. God for that. It's yeah, a, no, I, I get it. I just was, was it intended to, inf I mean, I guess that's why I just want to like, like intended to inform this, the Climate Council's work as well. Well, if Andrew's on the phone, I'd like to hear hear from her. I can, I'm, I'm I just can, I'm intuiting it, but it would just be helpful. Yeah. Well, I think I think uh -oh. it was intended to understand the gap that's going to exist. With, damn it! No, seriously. <laughs> I I don't know how to communicate with you today. All right, we don't have to we don't have to answer that question. I get it. I understand the gap that's going to exist. Okay. Um, all right, so your good point, Jane, leave it into next steps. Maybe we can take a stab at the next steps, um, sort of fleshing that out a little bit more, maybe before the next task group meeting too. And I don't know, like in terms of the memo itself, whether or not like that level of detail goes into a memo is an open question to me, but um, the general thrust of the conversation makes sense. I think the process is another another memo. It seems like mm -hmm. the process that we're going to need to the, the work our work plan for the year the transportation work plan for the year. Is well, a, can we dust yeah. off the um, what do you call that thing? The Gantt chart. And oh yeah, there you go. 
relook at that. We had spent some time on the process in the Gantt chart, um, which could we could update it potentially to outline next steps in a process as this. Yeah, that's, yeah that's a good start. Okay. What else do we want to cover today? Um, did, did you did you talk about the hearings? Um, I'm going to go to Barry on Thursday. I th you probably talked about all that already and how they're going, Megan. Did yeah. that get covered? Megan left, okay. but they've been they've been going well. Um, I don't Good. think they're doing what we're required of the GWSA, I'll just say, because the oh. GWSA specifically requires us to reach frontline and impacted communities. And I would argue that that's not who's coming to the events really. Right. Um, so we'll be revisiting sort of like how our approach and how we do that. That's part of, I mentioned, we have an intern who's coming on board um, to work with us to help with the responsiveness summary as well as sort of review and critique um, our outreach related to this. So um, yeah, so Wednesday's our last in-person one in Barrie and then Friday, there's the online one and that one has a lot of people signed up for it, the online one. We haven't had more than 25 people maybe, because that's the Burlington and Manchester were about the same is what I heard. Mm. I didn't go to Burlington, I went to Manchester. But I think we have a bunch of registered for Barry. Okay. Do you still need help? Does Megan, Megan need know. help? I'm not sure what, we haven't had a lot of roles actually for staff or state people. Okay. Okay. Deirdre is presenting at Wednesdays and I'm facilitating Wednesday. Yep. Um, and we haven't been using note takers except for one note taker in the front of the room. Yep. So if you'd like to join Gina, you should just come as a participant. I don't think okay. likely that we'll okay. need a role. You don't because I, okay, that's good. That'll, uh, it's a good piece of intel and I, as I decide what to do that night. Okay, thanks. I will sacrifice a great deal for the planet, but Wednesday evenings I ride with my bike club and I will not sacrifice that. <laughs> Wait, that's what I do on Wednesday with Andrea. And I have to sacrifice, Bram. Let's go. <laughs> Andrew and I ride together every Wednesday. <laughs> all right. Well, maybe we should alternate. I'm just kidding. We should alternate Wednesdays. Maybe I can give up half. But it's so rarely good weather on Wednesday evening that when it is. No, and it's the Jane, one opening this week. Jane, Andrea, and Bram should. The solution is obvious. The three of you should bike to <laughs> Barry together. <laughs> great. I can facilitate in bike clubs. That's great. Yes. That sounds it's, that sounds wonderful to me. If anyone wants to do this meeting in Crassbury, they're more than welcome. <laughs> this bike ride. I'd rather bike to Crassbury. Yeah. <laughs> and and the meetings go faster when you facilitate in bike clothing. Yeah, That's probably true. <laughs> but you got to stick together. <laughs> it would yeah. be hard to stick to Andrea. You got to do a page line. Yeah. Okay. So do we want to confirm our next meeting officially in service of biweekly conversations will take place on Monday the 3rd at 3.30? All saying yes, thumbs up. Great. If you can get that on the calendar, Jane, and just Jane, if you can dust off that like standing, off that, agenda, like, standing agenda, that'd be great. And you're gonna reach out to Secretary Moore, Secretary Flynn, and Secretary Clouser, Jane, or no? Should we? Julie will reach out, <coughs> Kristen. <coughs> um, okay, and ideally we could get their thoughts before October 3rd. That would be great. Um, and Jared will work on updating that memo. And I'm gonna volunteer, volunteer, ask Jared and maybe Gina to maybe work on like the sort of beginning to flesh out more tangible next steps and potential scenarios for both public engagement, but also deeper dive, dive. into exploring the different op options. Maybe we can dust off the Gantt chart. Does that sound good? 
Yeah. Yes, happy to, happy to do that. Yeah. I Great. would just say though, the timeline for an updated memo will be not before October 3rd. It will be. Yeah, I think the memo is a different time. thing. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I think we can get more clarity on next steps. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay. Really quickly though, Jane, maybe, you know, in terms of next steps and like tangible things that we should be doing, I think there are tangible things that we should be doing. The question of who's doing them with what kind of support is, is a question to me. Like if we talk about like public engagement, we want to host like some webinars to look at what Nova Scotia is doing, if we can get a hold of anyone there, what Oregon's doing or, you know, anyway, we can help organize some of those things, but what, what might we expect from support? So I just, um, just fine, finished the facilitation and public engagement RFP um, and just got feedback back from Ed as general counsel on Friday that I have to incorporate. But I will say that um, in order to sort of have a structured decision around like use of resources and priorities around public engagement. Um, I built in a sort of review process with the steering committee. So it's not just sort of like A&R directing the contract resources, but also like having a clear process within the council around decisions are made. So I sort of built in this like, you know, for lack of like a very active chair and over archer of the council, I felt like the steering committee made the most sense for like consensus decision making about resources. So I that will be sort of the process going forward. There's, um, you know, the contract with CBI was supposed to end at the end of September. We're able to amend it to extend time, um, but no resources to it. They have some money left, so hopefully we'll get through October with CBI in place and then be vetting new proposals from consultants who would manage facilitation services as well as community engagement. So I'll, I'll share that with you all once it's posted so you can see it. And obviously, if you know folks who might want to bid on it or be part of the process, that would be great. but we have $200,000 annually to put towards that contract built into the base budget of a and &R. That's great. Okay. All right, anything else? Thank you much. Anything else, anyone? Okay. Well, enjoy the rest of the soggy day. Hopefully you don't get caught in any floods. Jared and anyone else? seems to have subsided. Peter says it's been, it hasn't stopped ever in Whitefield today. He just texted oh, really? me again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it was really it heavy. 91, it was, it was really epically draining all the way up to 91. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. All right. Thanks, all right. everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a nice Bye. Bye. Have a nice night.